Welcome to Paintbrush and Ivories, the podcast for artists, curious creatives and art lovers that connects creativity with the heart and soul. I'm Michelle Walker and I'm here with my creative soul sister, Jennifer Ruth Russell. Hey, Jen. Hey, so good to be with you today. Guess what we forgot to do last month? What? We forgot to celebrate our year, our anniversary oh. of Paintbrush and Ivories. Oh. Let's Happy celebrate. Happy birthday to us. <laughs> absolutely (laughs) I give a little joy cry (laughs) it has been so much fun yes it has been I can't believe that it's been a year that means that we've had you know about 24 episodes right so far that's amazing thank you Michelle exactly the that is exactly the number that you have been on 24 (laughs) (laughs) I think it's been a wonderful year so Today's episode, starting our second year in the podcast seat, is actually a flow on from last month, isn't it? So we're talking online challenges, and we really covered in that first part, talking about how you get yourself clear about what you want to deliver, what you want to focus on with your online challenge, and how to prepare for it. So Jen, it's go day, you hit the big green button on your online challenge, what are we thinking about in terms of delivery? What would you think about and what have you thought about when you've been running yours? A big relief. (laughs) We're here at the day. I just want to say before, I want to back up a little bit. I'm sorry to do this, but I want to say if you need some help with the tech, please get help because there is a little bit of tech here that needs to happen for you to do videos for you to, uh, you know, do a landing page, for you to create a Facebook group, right? By now, I ho- hope all of this has been done on our first day. How to create videos. Maybe you've never done a video before. That is all so doable. And what about collecting money? Like you said, you had a platform, you had a shopping cart, and all that is really doable. And I would say, too, that if you need some help, I like to reach out to Fiverr. I don't know if you have a resource, if you need some tech help. Michelle, do you? Don't very often, but I did for this one. I had a colleague that I knew was available and she was there for the tech, but mostly for the online sessions when I was going to be online for my day four and day eight, because I thought that would get tricky. So that's actually mm-hmm. part of the delivery. Let's talk about that. But yes, I did fine with the tech. I was, I did okay. Beautiful. But I know right. you would. I know you would. And and that's important for us not to take for granted because I work up to a certain point and then it's like, oh, I just start to see deer in the headlights kind of feeling like, oh my God, there's just too much, much here. And I will also say again, just keep it simple. Keep it simple in what you already have, what you can do. I mean, you could do your videos on your iPhone if you need to. Um, That's easy. And there's even some great editing programs out there that you can edit as well. So keep it simple, but I would say keep that graphic going in your videos as well. If you're, I did my videos actually in person so people would see me and I got a little teleprompter for my iPad that I could put down what I needed to say because I tend to go off script if I'm just speaking out in in my little uh, la la land, (laughs) I can go a many directions. So I got this beautiful And I will give you the name of it to put in the notes of this one, Michelle. I'm forgetting exactly. I think it's just called Teleprompter. It's an app that I paid probably, I think, $12 for, and I still use it to this day. Mm -mm. So I just wanted to to just put a shout out for some tech help if you need it. It's a good point. Yeah. And I think for me, my challenge, even though I had a go day, I actually released information as soon as people signed up because I wanted people to have something to work with straight away. Mm -hmm. And it sort of set up what was coming. It was sharing some techniques for how people could work through the material and look after themselves and support themselves. So even Mm -hmm. though I had an absolute go day, big green button day, there was stuff that people got access to as soon as they signed up. And I think that's actually a really good thing to think about. How do you stay in connection with people If they've signed up two weeks or 10 days before your start, how do you communicate with them and how do you keep them excited? So a couple of days out, you might want to send a communication and let them know it's beginning and then the day before it's exciting and you're kind of really building the energy of the group 
And some of that will be happening if you've got a discussion platform like Facebook. I struggle, like a lot of people, with Facebook. I don't spend a lot of time on Facebook anymore. I find it doesn't have the energy that I want, except within communities. And where there Mm -hmm. are groups that are closed communities, I find that is still a bastion of great uh, support and good communication. And while I've tried other platforms, other courses I've been on have used things like Mighty Networks. I find that people can find just that hurdle of connecting to another platform, enough of a hurdle to stop them from joining. And having said that, a lot of people on Facebook, but they don't necessarily join the discussion or even join the discussion group. So I feel that all of that can happen. So with those who are in there, you can really build some excitement about the material being released and get into the rhythm of the challenge. One of the things that I think is really important, apart from having a kind of a routine and a set set way of doing things each day for the challenge, is managing your energy. So releasing an email first thing in the morning and then maybe doing some drop-ins to the Facebook discussion group and seeing how people are going maybe a bit later in the day. I think that's really important that you manage your own time and input during the actual time of the delivery of the mm-hmm. challenge. Yes, absolutely. I I just have to say this, that I thought you did such a smash up job of your challenge. I thought it was one of the best challenges I've ever seen executed. Mine was much more simple than yours. What I did was, I love that you said, balance your time because there was an email that would be going out every morning, every evening, I was going to be picking the winner of the daily prize and making sure that got in the email that was going out the next morning and then checking in with Facebook, um, the Facebook group, because the way that my challenge worked is that I would send out the email every day with the video. And in that video, they were given an assignment that they had to do and then come back to the Facebook group and share what the challenge was for that day. And then whoever shared was eligible for the prize. So you really got a prize if you're going back to the Facebook group often and also sending out emails beforehand, uh, like a bring a friend along campaign email, you know, like, hey, you signed up, it's so great. Who do you wanna join you for this challenge? You know, and, and that was a great way to build also the momentum of what was going on. Make sure you get your little book of abundance, you know, and this is what it is. And then every day, because I didn't have a platform like you did, I would include the previous videos from all the days. So by the by the fifth day, there were five different links to different videos that everybody could go back and look at the videos. So I, I really just used emails and Facebook. And then we did get together for a call. Like you did Zoom. This was back in, in 2018 and 2019. Yep. So we did we did a phone call and it was just a wonderful time of just grounding and letting everybody talk about what they were experiencing and also answer any questions mm-hmm. um, and because there were you know working with money you have questions and challenges so it was yeah. really good to personally touch in and the thing I didn't say too is at the end of my challenge I invited everyone to come to a webinar with me and it was a free webinar but I that was an invitation that came out at the end. At yep. the end of the, so we'll the get gym. we'll get to the wrap. We're still in delivery. How about we? Okay. How about we talk some more about? You've touched on another idea that I wanted to mention, which is having those little prizes every day is one way of helping people stay engaged and keeping the kind of the flow of conversation going. Not just because of the incentives, but it does offer something for people to do it. I think that's great. And I feel like one of our jobs when we're in the actual challenge, if it's your challenge, your main job is to help people get results for themselves. Mm -hmm. That's a really, like, it sounds really simple, but we're dealing with all kinds of questions that might be raised. And if you're not doing a challenge that relates to mindset per se, but you're actually doing something that might be more technical, maybe the answers and the questions can be a lot more straightforward. But I find with the work that I do around money work is very much mindset and it's into coaching work. My two riding orders are always keep it positive and keep it neutral. And what I mean by that is 
it could be easy to get alongside someone when they're telling you a really difficult part of their lives and part of their story. And, you know, I, I don't try and expand that. I try and help them see what's a question that can help them get some understanding. So being really clear about your role as the guide through the challenge, as the host of the discussions, as the facilitator of the learning, all of that you need to think through and be clear about how does that then mean you're going to show up? So how do you help people get the results they need or they're looking for. And that means that one of the early steps, regardless of the content that you're covering, can be what does every person who signed up want to get out of this challenge? That can be like the first mm -hmm. activity because it helps people ground into what of this is important for them. So that I know that's flipping back to content, but it just occurs to me as we're talking that by having that piece of information from people when they shared what it was that they were wanting to work on, it helped me help them through the material that I then shared. Yes, and I love that you brought that up because to me, one of the one of the most powerful places to do that is the questions coming into the Facebook group. You know, you have an opportunity to ask a couple of questions, and I think mine were just very general, but gave them opportunity like, what's your biggest challenge around uh, feeling powerful around money? You know, just, you know, just asking some real basic questions. And have you signed up yet for the challenge? Because some people would invite people into the Facebook group that hadn't yet signed up on the email list. So remember that you're collecting emails and you are inviting people to the Facebook group. So if people end up in the Facebook group that haven't signed up for your email, they won't be receiving the prizes unless they're on the email list, you know, just stuff like that. You just have to remember where, where your information is coming in, your data is coming in. Yeah. And even though all of these challenges have a green light, big button, let's go day, I was still getting inquiries after the start. And I had to make mm -hmm. a call as to when was my cutoff point, because I felt that people were going to be so swamped by information that it would be a bit more difficult for them. The other aspect to the online challenge that I really was conscious of, and you said it before, Jen, when you were saying you'd release an email in the morning and then at night you'd program the winner for the next day to go out the next morning. Well, I couldn't do that because I had Australians mm, and New Zealanders <laughs> in my time zone and then I had the UK and Europe was eight, nine hours behind, but then the US was 14 hours behind. And so I would have to get up early in the morning. So everything went out at 7 a.m. Everything got opened for the day and emails went out at 7 a.m. So I had to get up. I had to look at what was happening on the Facebook group, respond to those, see who was active, and then come back, make my decision at the 11th hour about who got that day because it wasn't just a day. It was like a 24-hour period that I needed to embrace. That also became a bit of a challenge for people when they were signing up, even though I put a lot of information into the welcome module, as well as on the sign up page, it was still confusing for people. So mm -hmm. while I said the challenge starts Tuesday, the 31st of May, that actually means if you're in the Canada or in the US, that means it's going to be starting for you on Monday, the 30th. That kind of fried people a bit. So mm -hmm. it is a challenge. If you're running an online challenge, you're based in the US. Um, it kind of doesn't matter because the rest of the world follows. If you're based in Australia and New Zealand, it does matter. And you need to make that not a thing for your participants. You need to take care of that business and as much as you can. And then there's always going to be a bit of a gap. But that was, wow. that was interesting. So actually deciding, was there a cutoff time for people to enter in? And I decided yes. And then what would that be? So I had to quickly get another page up that said, if you've missed out on the Money Mojo for Artists Challenge, sign up here if you're interested in knowing when the next one's run. So I had to do a bit of that switching and, you know, there was a bit of tech there, which um, challenged but didn't, didn't kind of take me over the edge. So there's some Great of that which idea. happens, yeah, when you're in the gallop, as it were, mm -hmm. you know, you're kind of in delivery and there's sort of moves that you have to make. It might not be, if you're listening, depending on the way that you're structuring your challenge, it might not matter. So. And also you can get in a virtual assistant to help you, you yes. know, which would be a really big help. Um, always a big help for me. 
I have one. Um, she is just amazing. And I let her know when things like that are happening. And of course, she's working on it with me beforehand. But just to be on call if I need some more support, because people will get caught up in the technical part of what you're doing. Mm. And I don't always have an answer. And I'm really grateful to have somebody on my team that does. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So inside the challenge, you and I both had some kind of conversation sessions, didn't we? Yeah. And I feel that that's a really great way to help people get the results they need. Mm -hmm. Not everyone wants to offer a question, but people were happy to come and listen to the questions that were posted. I did two things. I took questions out of the group and responded to those, but I also took things that I was noticing, themes, and spoke to some of those because I felt that at a sort of more generic level, some things could be useful for sharing. Yeah. I want to say also that another Facebook thing is you have to remember to pin that day's activity with, this is another graphic thing. I made a graphic for each day with a big number on it. So people wouldn't have any confusion of what day we were on. And I, I can't believe that you did that switching through time zones. That's just like boggles my mind to think about doing that. <laughs> but I do know this that would be really helpful is to have a graphic for each day and make sure that you pin it to the top and take the, the day before is off of the pin. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just a simple thing yep. that took me a while to really get in the rhythm of doing that. So I really found it helpful to have a list of what I need to be taking care of every day. And then after, the, and I did have an extra day, I must say, because it was similar to you that I had a closing ceremony who somebody got the grand prize and that was a big deal. You know, mm -hmm. you had to be there and, and it was great. It was kind of like a wrap up uh, time to be together. It's really powerful. You mentioned pinning and just that Facebook functionality. Now they've got a thing called guides and it was possible for me to set up a guide for each day. And I popped in the relevant post that was harvesting people's comments from that day's activities. So at any point, people could go and find their way through the guide to get into the material that they needed. And I think you're right. I didn't use a graphic each day. I used a color. So I started at the rainbow end of red on day one and went through to violet on day seven because we're, we're artists. So we kind of cued for color and people, even subliminally people, can pick up on that without necessarily having to think long and hard. Mm -hmm. So that's during the challenge. You ended with a closing ceremony, which I loved. I ended with another Q&A series of calls and coaching sessions on the day after the last day of material. So I kind of did day eight and I thought that worked well and people were very engaged. So that's in the delivery, isn't it? That's the final thing that we do and the question then is throughout your challenge and at the end is there something that you're directing people to is there a fuller course a fuller dive that people can do in the content that you've been sharing is there something to come after in which case you may want to preload that during the challenge and let people know that it will be made clear to them at the end what that's about or just share at the end this is where you can go next if you feel called to. And I know a lot of people use the challenge in their marketing process to let people into bigger courses. And that was mm -hmm. for you, wasn't it? That was the case. Yeah, as, as a part of a launch. So, you know, you can use it as a part of a launch to a, a, a bigger offering. And I must say, let them have an opportunity to continue the work. Because mm -hmm. remember, you're giving them a mini course, a micro learning and you're wetting their appetite for something bigger. And to me, it's really important to have something for them to go into. Yeah. And I, I personally felt a lot of pressure to have something for people to go on to, and I resisted it. And I thought long and hard about what, what brought me joy, and what brought me joy was running the challenge. And if people do want to deepen in, they can always opt for a one-on-one -on -one session or a series of one-on-ones. So have a think about that if you're listening and you mm -hmm. don't have a course or some program that you want to move people into, then don't let that stop you from running the challenge. Run the challenge. It's a beautiful and exciting experience in itself. 
And then there's always a way of helping people deepen in the work. But I think some of the marketing, traditional marketing wisdom that's out there at the moment is very much pushing people to have a series of things that they offer, getting ever more expensive as people go on. And I reject that. I think it doesn't have to be like that. Make it work for you. Make it feel really good for you. And I always have this idea of a rainbow runway for people and that they come on and they they step onto the rainbow with me and they enjoy whatever it is. But I don't feel like it has to be set in any way. And that's been, you know, I, I kind of had to really sit with that because I felt a degree of pressure to do it differently and perhaps more like what it's espoused to be the way. So I feel like in the follow-up, we're obviously going to let people know if they want to continue doing work, how they can do that. But it is also, they need to know some practical stuff, like how long have they got access to the materials? Mm -hmm. And even though that was on the sign-up page, they'll have forgotten. So just remind them, say, you've got lifetime access, you've got one month's access, you've got until I run the course next time in six months time, whatever it is for you, just let people know because... They may have holidays coming up or they may have some space in their work life that they can actually do some more of this and they need to know what that is. Yeah, and I think it's really good to set that boundary when it's going to be not available. I remember doing a, a summit and somebody came back a year and a half later and said, where are those recordings? <laughs> I was like, oh, you're a little late. Yep, it's They're gone. It's, it's They're done. not available any longer. That was then. <laughs> I just have to say in, in answer to what you said, because I do think there's no pressure to do anything that you're not comfortable with. However, you know, a one on one is a very wonderful offering to to give to people, you know, a way to work with you. Maybe it's art lessons. Maybe your challenge is about how to start a blog or how to start a podcast or it could be anything. Right. And I'm sure you have a little bit more information about that to give to them in a way that feels comfortable to you. Yes. Yeah. And I think the last things just in this sort of wrap up phase and the follow up is good to reach out to people and ask them how did they experience the challenge? What were their things that really stood out for them as working? Was there any improvements that they would recommend? Because it's always a learning opportunity for us to get to know how we could make things better and mm -hmm. refining things down the track of, you know, assuming that you enjoyed the running of the challenge. Let's take advantage of all the energy and investment that you've made into putting this together, make it work by improving it over time so it continues to deliver value for people. Mm -hmm. I just want to say one more thing about the follow-up emails I think are really important. I mean, just think of it as having an amazing journey uh, with a group of people and now the journey, the main journey is over. And you are probably a little bit tired and, it, and it, you know, I had, I remember I had to kind of push to remember to do this and to have them set up to go before the challenge. And if I hadn't, I probably wouldn't have sent them out, but just having a few emails after the challenge, one to maybe survey them and see how, how they liked it, but just to say, Hey, how's it going? And I'm still here basically. I'm still here. And I'm so grateful we had this time together, whatever mm. it is that you're felt to say. Mm, beautiful. So the survey is really significant, but staying connected, I think, is what also is important, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. And the other, the other aspect for me is just creating a bit of time for yourself to do your own reflections. So what are the things that you learned from running the challenge? What would you do differently? What do you think worked for you? And why did it work? What was the ingredients that made it work? So I'm all for reflecting because I know having done this particular one once, I know how to improve it at least a certain amount from my own observations and my own reflections. But and the other thing I'd like to say is having a critical friend, and I don't mean critical in a negative way, but a critical friend as in someone who knows and loves you. And if you can offer a free place to them to join you on your challenge and be that critical friend at the end and throughout, that can give some feedback and help guide you and certainly at the end help you in the reflection process of giving feedback about what they saw from their perspective. That's gold. And Jen, I love that you do that for me. I think it's incredibly valuable if you can have someone 
do that role for you if you're running an online challenge because we can only be in so many places as Mm -hmm. we can and we only bring our own perspective and if we want to learn and grow this is a fantastic way to do that oh it is and i would say one more thing celebrate it with a friend (laughs) you know celebrate your challenge celebrate that you did this and and it was successful and no matter what happened if the tech flew apart at one point you know uh just keep going it's amazing because people don't seem to really care that much about that stuff i was amazed that the people most of the people's favorite part of course was you know connecting with mother mary but also that little book of abundance that was a surprise to me how that became a treasure that they still mm-hmm. carry with them in their purse you know it's just amazing <laughs> the surprises that come yes so let's celebrate that we've probably finished all the content is there anything else that you can think of to share about running an online challenge that you'd like to let others know if they're thinking of doing it I think I will just say it is a lot to do it is a wonderful brilliant process and I would definitely look up Alina Vincent, if you're serious about it, because she was she's a great teacher and she'll take you through step by step of what you need to do, uh, because I don't think I could have gotten it done without her. Mm, Tell you the truth. It's good to have resources. And I feel like I've had teachers in the past that have set me up with some of the process and the content that I found supported me beautifully. But to be honest, it was a month's work. And Mm -hmm. I didn't do it 100% every day. I had other things that I was also running. But if you think of it like that, it really is an investment of time, which is easy to do when you're passionate. So pick a topic that you just love to the end of the earth and back, you know. So that's my advice is go with something that brings you joy, that you know is yours to do, as we would say. And then it's really makes it very easy. But yes. And if you do decide to embark on an online challenge, reach out to us. We'd love to hear what you found, what you've learned. And if you've run them in the past, we'd also love to hear what have been your gems that you've learned. So please reach out to us. I'm Michelle at michellewalker.com.au via email, or you can get me at Instagram, Michelle Walker out. Jen, you're Jen at jenniferruthrussell.com. Is that right? That's right. And what's your Instagram handle, my friend? Jen Ruth Russell. There you go. All right, folks. Thank you for joining us for this episode as we wrapped up how to run an online challenge. And we wish you well. We so enjoy spending time with you. Thank you for your time today. Thanks, Jen. Thank you, Michelle. Wonderful episode. Bye for now. Bye, everyone.